Answer number one, we are reproducing the uh, physics, the conditions, uh, just after the Big Bang. We're doing it in this collider, and we're reproducing that so we can see what it was like when the universe just started. This is what we tell people. OK, answer two. We are trying to understand the basic laws of nature. Um, it sounds slightly more mild, but this is really where we are and what we're trying to do. We study particles because just after the Big Bang, all there was was particles. And they carry the information about how our universe started and how it got to be the way it is and its future. At the beginning of the 1900s, it became clear that all known matter, everything that we know about, is made of atoms. And that atoms are made of just three particles, the electron, the proton, and the neutron. In the 30s, other particles were discovered. And by the 1960s, there were hundreds of new particles with a new particle discovered every week. And there was mass confusion until a number of theorists realized that there was a simple mathematical structure that explained all of this. That most of these particles were made of the same three little bits we call quarks. And that there are only a handful of truly fundamental particles which all fit together in a nice neat pattern. And there was born the standard model. Eventually, all the particles in the theory were discovered, except one, the Higgs. And the Higgs is unlike any other particle. It's the linchpin of the standard model. Its theory was written down in the 1960s by Peter Higgs and a number of other theorists. We believe it is the crucial piece responsible for holding matter together. It is connected to a field which fills all of space and which gives particles like the electron mass and allowed them to get caught in atoms and thus is responsible for the creation of atoms, molecules, planets, and people. Without the Higgs, life as we know it wouldn't exist. But to prove that it's true, we have to smash particles together at high enough energy to disturb the field and create a Higgs particle. If the Higgs exists, the LHC is the machine that will discover it. Let's assume you're successful and everything comes out OK. Sure. What do we gain from it? What's the economic return? How do you justify all this? By the way, I am an economist. I, I don't hold it against you. Um, the question by an economist uh, was, uh, what is the financial gain of running an experiment like this and the discoveries that we will make in this experiment? And it's a very, very simple answer. I have no idea. <laughs> we have no idea. When, when radio waves were discovered, they weren't called radio waves because there were no radios. They were discovered as some sort of radiation. Basic science for big breakthroughs needs to occur at a level where you are not asking what is the economic gain. You are asking what do we not know and where can we make progress. So what is the LHC good for? Could be nothing other than just understanding everything. The first time I ever saw Atlas,